Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jason and Tiffany Crawford? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Jason DeWayne Crawford and Tiffany Joy Crawford lived in Cullman, Alabama, which is about 45 minutes north of Birmingham. Jason had been married and divorced. He claimed that his first wife was unfaithful. At some point, Jason met Tiffany. She was married at the time, but Jason wasn't going to let her long-term commitment get in his way. He thought that she was outgoing, striking, and beautiful. Tiffany eventually divorced her husband. Jason and Tiffany married in 2011. They would go on to have a son and a daughter. They also raised Jason's son, Logan, who was from Jason's first marriage. At some point, Tiffany started having an affair, but her affair partner broke up with her. I guess the infidelity was too much of a commitment. Tiffany was not pleased with this breakup, and she was unhappy with Jason because she thought he was apathetic and did not participate in the marriage. Tiffany was particularly offended by this last item. She was so enthusiastic about marital participation, she was active in more than one marriage at the same time. Before moving to the timeline of the crime, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Factor. Too busy to cook this spring? With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, preparation, and cleaning up, too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Then get back outside and soak up the warmer weather. With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. Factor offsets 100% of their delivery emissions to your door, sources 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices, and features sustainable sourced seafood in their meals. Get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. After a long day of conducting research, writing, and recording videos, Factor is my go-to dinner solution. It delivers in three areas that are particularly important to me. Factor is flexible, convenient, and nutritious. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code DRGRANDE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's 50% off your first Factor box at factor75.com, DRGRANDE50. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On May 2, 2017, not long after 11 p.m., Jason called 911 and told the operator, my wife is shot. When the police arrived, they discovered that 32-year-old Tiffany Crawford was dead inside her minivan. She had been shot one time in the left side of her jaw and one time in her left temple. There was a revolver fitted with a pink grip in Tiffany's left hand. It fell out of her hand when a deputy tried to take her pulse. Based on the photographs, it appears to be a Ruger LCR 38 Special. This is a five-shot revolver that weighs less than one pound. Here's what Jason told the police at the scene. He had been arguing with his wife. He wasn't going to let her inside the house that night. Jason was walking back inside his residence when he heard a gunshot, a scream, then another gunshot. He exited the house and went back outside. At this point, Jason found Tiffany slumped over in the driver's seat of the minivan. Jason said that the revolver belonged to Tiffany. She kept it in the driver door for protection. Despite the fact that the revolver had been discharged twice, the police did not bother testing Jason for gunshot residue. They also failed to search his house. The police soon realized that Jason's mother was an office manager at the Cullman County Sheriff's Office. Therefore, the next morning, the case was turned over to the Alabama State Bureau of Investigation. Officers with this agency tried to get a search warrant for Tiffany's minivan, but in the short time that the sheriff's office handled the investigation, they released the minivan back to the Crawford family. Jason's family members immediately cleaned the vehicle. A week after Tiffany's death, the police interviewed Jason. Here's what he told them. Tiffany started drinking more in the months leading up to her death. On the day that she died, Jason discovered that Tiffany had an affair after reading messages on a computer they shared. Jason called Tiffany about this discovery, but she denied having an affair. 
Tiffany had their two children with her. When she arrived home a few hours later, the children went in the house, but Jason would not let Tiffany in the house. They argued for more than an hour. Eventually, Tiffany asked Jason to retrieve her work clothes from inside the house. He had just shut the door after entering the house when he heard the gunshot, the scream, then the other gunshot. He ran outside, opened the driver's door, and found his wife dead. This is when he called 911. About a week later, Jason was given a so-called lie detector test. The police told him he failed and accused him of murder. Jason left the police station. A person cannot fail or pass a polygraph. This is just a trick that the police use. In March of 2018, Tiffany's death was ruled a homicide after the autopsy results were completed. The medical examiner said that the shot to Tiffany's left temple must have been fired from at least 10 inches away. This was based on a lack of abrasions or gunpowder particles on Tiffany's head. If the minivan door was closed, as Jason stated, and Tiffany used her left hand, it would have been very difficult to create 10 inches of space. In addition, Tiffany was right-handed, and there was no blood on the driver's side door or window of the minivan. Jason was arrested on May 21, 2018, and released on bond about a half hour later. In November 2022, Jason went on trial. He was convicted of murder. On March 10, 2023, Jason Crawford was sentenced to 99 years in prison. He could be out in 15 years. Now moving to my analysis. Jason Crawford maintains his innocence. He said that Tiffany must have been responsible for her own death. This brings me to the question, was Jason actually guilty of murder? Let's take a look at the evidence, both for and against the idea that Jason was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. On the day of Tiffany's death, Jason discovered that she had an affair. Jason admitted that he was angry. Before the shooting, Jason said that he was arguing with his wife and he made many unkind statements to her, which included calling her an unfit mother. Tiffany had plans on leaving Jason. She had recently saved up $500 to do this. After the shooting, Jason called 911. The operator repeatedly asked him who shot his wife, but he initially avoided answering. The police found the gun in Tiffany's left hand, yet before this, when the operator asked about the location of the gun, Jason responded, it's laying beside her. Tiffany was right-handed, and the holster in her vehicle was also for a right-handed individual. It's unusual for a person who is right-handed to fire a gun using their left hand. Tiffany was not experienced with firearms. The Ruger LCR weighs less than a pound. Therefore, it produces quite a bit of felt recoil. It would be difficult for Tiffany to maintain a grip on this gun, even if she had used her right hand. It seems very unlikely that she could have fired the revolver using her left hand and maintained her grip well enough to fire a second shot immediately after that. Tiffany was shot twice. If she was the one who pulled the trigger, this would be very unusual. Neither wound on Tiffany was a contact wound, so the gun was not touching her skin either time when it discharged. The medical examiner said that the gun was at least 10 inches away from Tiffany's head when it was fired. There did not seem to be enough room for that if the minivan door was closed, as Jason indicated. There was no blood on the driver's side door or window. Male DNA was found on the grip and on the trigger of Tiffany's revolver. The sample was too small to determine who it belonged to. None of Tiffany's DNA was found on the gun. This makes it seem like Jason wiped down the revolver. One of Jason's friends testified that Jason called her after discovering Tiffany was having an affair. He said that he could not go through this again. Moving to the exculpatory factors, Jason's son Logan said that he heard his father come back inside the house just before the first gunshot. This is consistent with Jason's story. Tiffany started receiving treatment from a mental health counselor on the day before her death. She was drinking excessively and upset because her affair partner broke up with her. Tiffany kept a journal. On the day of her death, she wrote, quote, I'm struggling with figuring out what to do with myself, unquote. A sergeant who responded to the scene of the shooting stated that he thought Tiffany was the shooter. Jason did not appear to have any blood on him. 
How did he clean up so quickly if he was the shooter? It's possible that the gun was discharged closer than 10 inches to Tiffany's head because her hair could have blocked the gunpowder residue and prevented abrasions. Jason may have put the gun in Tiffany's hand because he was worried about being accused of murder. Similarly, he may have closed the door to the minivan. These actions are not wise, but they don't make him a killer. Jason's statement about the gun being beside Tiffany was technically accurate. The gun was both beside her and in her left hand simultaneously. When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Jason Crawford was guilty of murder? Yes, I believe he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The fact that Tiffany was shot twice doesn't look too good for Jason. Moving to the next question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Jason and Tiffany had a tumultuous relationship, which started when Tiffany was married to somebody else. This should have been Jason's first clue that infidelity may occur in the future, but he was overwhelmed with Tiffany's physical attractiveness. Tiffany started having an affair and was generally upset with Jason. She came home on May 2, 2017. They immediately started arguing. Jason was astounded that Tiffany would cheat on him, even though she cheated with him when they met. He thought he was somehow special and would defy the laws of infidelity. During this argument, Tiffany was probably in her minivan because she was threatening to leave, not because Jason was refusing to let her enter the house. In the heat of the moment, Jason reached down and grabbed Tiffany's Ruger LCR from the driver's side door and shot her twice in the head. He wiped the gun down and placed it in her left hand. Then he called 911. Jason's son, Logan, may have been mistaken about hearing his father inside the house when the first gunshot occurred. It's also possible that Logan heard the front door of the house close prior to the gunshot and didn't realize his father was exiting and not entering. When the police arrived, Jason managed to avoid confessing. For some reason, perhaps because Jason's mother worked for the police, investigators failed to collect some of the evidence from the scene. Despite his initial good fortune, Jason was not able to escape justice forever. Although, he may be released from prison after serving just 15 years. Now moving to my final thoughts. This case highlights the dangers of two different events. The first is infidelity. This is dangerous because it makes the partner who is cheating euphoric and the other partner extremely angry. The person who is cheating is too happy to recognize the danger from their partner. The second event is the moment when someone chooses to leave a relationship. This is a dangerous time because it leads to feelings of desperation in the person who is being abandoned. Any relationship that begins as an affair is almost certainly going to end in disaster. At the very least, it will be characterized by distrust. At the very worst, homicide. Those are my thoughts on the case of Jason and Tiffany Crawford. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.